We're here in foggy West Virginia for race four of the Spartan U.S. National Series presented by USANA. After the torrid pace of the six mile super course in Asheville, we bring on the second beast race of the season. A 13 mile course with 4,000 feet of elevation gain from the trails of Summit Bechtel Reserve. After a disappointing finish in Asheville, Ryan Atkins looks to bounce back on this more favorable course. But Xterra champion Josiah Middow, who made the race in Jacksonville, looks to take over the top podium spot. And don't forget about Ryan Woods. He won the North American Championships on this course in 2019. Now, let's take you to the action. And the races are off, and right out of the gates, you know a couple guys like to bring this thing out hot. Uh, face that has returned to the crowd, Aaron Newell, right there in the front, rocking that mullet. As they go over the hay bales, these runners are going to enter a slight uphill. It's going to climb and then bank to the right, and then the party really starts with a nice long climb. And Aaron Newell is out to the front early. You can see Mark Cadet, Brian Gawiski. Ryan Kempson, Ryan Atkins, and Logan Broadbent up there in the front. Broadbent has been a really nice surprise for the season. Third place in Jacksonville, really strong finish in Asheville, and a very strong finish in, uh, throughout the year, he's just been really competitive. And here, Mark Batris has moved to the front. Batris is fresh off of a trifecta victory in Hawaii, followed by Logan Broadbent. Look how smooth Batris is. He runs with power and almost aggression. The rest of the guys seem to be working together, coasting a little bit more, saving energy. And Batris makes those overwalls look easy. As you can see, Atkins, Hosek, Veerman, Kempson, Gadet, all together giving chase. But none of them seem to be throwing down the aggressive style pace that you're seeing out of Mark Batras right now. He's running with a lot of confidence after that third place finish in Asheville, and he's really finally figuring this sport out. And the guys are talking to each other. So not only up there is Mark Batras, but Logan Broadbent also somewhere in between that chase group and Batras himself. And Ryan Woods looks to have joined the party as well. And that's Josiah Middow right behind him. Middow being that Xterra racing champion. And Ryan Woods, obviously, as we mentioned before, won at this course in 2019 when it was the North American Championships. Ryan Atkins, as always, in no rush to start fast, using a pace that's comfortable for him, feeling out the field. He loves to make a hard push in the second half of the race. And as we enter the first major failable obstacle of the day, it's the monkey bars. Now these are covered in dew, and yes, that is Logan Broadbent, the Ninja Warrior and World Boomerang Champion up there in second place. It gets risky over here. These are sketchy. They're really slick. And you can see Josiah Middhouse. We got Mark Bradshaw trying to make a statement. Going out super fast. Aaron Yule and Logan Broadbent in second and third. Wow, what a start. They're absolutely flying through monkey bars. Long way to go, guys. Well, that spread things out a little bit, didn't it? There's Brian Gawiski chasing Mark Gaudet right there, and then Ryan Woods. So they are all in the thick of things with Kempson, Atkins, and Veerman. A bunch of Ryans all in a cluster. Now there's a little descent here, a little flat open space, and then all of a sudden, a nice climb that's going to spread things out even more as these guys are going to head into a little bit of woods after this field that opens up here. And 
you can see that mile one marker right there. And look at the gap way out in the distance, already on that hill. Mark Battress and Logan Broadbent. The versatility of Broadbent as an athlete. Being a smaller stature guy, but being so quick and so good on the obstacles. It's very impressive. Looks like Aaron Newell is starting to pay for that hot start a little bit. First race back of the year is usually pretty tough, and he went out quick with some of these really tough stud racers, and now he's going to have to hang on for another 12 miles. All right, guys, we're just waiting for the runners to come through. Uh, they've got the box and stairway just up there. Uh, they've got a really good climb uh, up to those obstacles, and then they're going to be flying down these woods. We're going to see who comes out uh, on top. We saw Mark Batch just go off early, see if he can hold that lead. Uh, but again, we're, we're only a couple of miles into the course. We've got Olympus coming up here, and we've got Log Carry. Uh, a lot going on in the first half of this course. I can't wait. All right, Mark Batras first. <sighs> Logan Broadbent second. Ryan Atkins third. Logan is so efficient when you look at that form. It's, it's just incredibly impressive how smooth he is. And you see Battress in front of him was working, really pumping hard. He went out hot in this race a couple years ago as well, but he wasn't able to maintain it. He had the lead for about half. Still Mark Battress. He's got a bit of a good lead. I swear, Mark. And this is Bender up here. And right after Bender, they're going to go into the woods, pop out, and then we get into uh, the log carry. And the log carry, that could be a big separator here. The log carry is not just a heavy log, but we're also going through the water for that. So these guys know some of these carries are coming. And right now it's about just conserving energy, being efficient, but also not losing contact with the leaders. Ryan Kempson, fourth, fifth. That's Tyler Veerman ahead of Kempson right there. And Veerman made his debut in Utah with a fifth place finish. He's extremely fit right now. Won the ultra in Ohio. And he is a major podium threat today. Mark Batchus, Logan Borbent, Ryan Atkins, Ryan Kempson, Tyler Beerman. about two and a half miles into the course right now and the athletes are hitting the log carry so they're gonna run in grab one of these guys throw it over the shoulder and take off on this course into the water there is a deep nasty walk through some wet sloppy stuff deep water it's gonna challenge the footing a little bit and of course the log is designed to wear out your back wear out your shoulder a little bit test the grit. Some of the stronger guys, they're going to get some big gaps here. So Batras had the lead here in this race. Last time he raced at this venue at this point, but he didn't sustain it. Let's see if this year is going to be different. He had a great finish in Asheville, taking third place, and he's just coming off winning three consecutive races in Hawaii at the trifecta weekend. Logan Broadbent 
here in second position. This is a great place for him to be with Ryan Atkins right behind him, grabbing a log and going into the slop. And looking comfortable as always, Ryan Atkins needing to win here today to keep his chance alive of winning this whole series. Ryan Kempson right behind him in a strong position, and then Tyler Veerman sitting in fifth. We got a major pass here. This is Logan Broadbent working the edge. Savvy vet move as Batris was working through the deeper water and makes that nice pass. Well, all sorts of madness going on in this tricky, tricky log carry. Logan's just taking the lead just here, followed by Mark Batris and Brian Atkins. Look at Broadbent stretching out that lead, really opening up on the run with that log. He's one of the smallest competitors in the field, but also somehow one of the strongest when it comes to the carries, and look at that. You got Logan Broadbent moving in the log carry into first place, followed by Ryan Atkins. This is an unexpected move out of a man of such small stature, but so much strength. He's an incredible athlete, a ninja warrior. Ryan Atkins now in second, taking off running, looking smooth, and Mark Batris in third, followed closely by Ryan Kempson. This one's gonna be a tight one. We have some really intense battles for podium spots, and right now it's still anybody's game, but I don't think anyone expected to see Logan Broadbent out in first place, especially moving up into first during the carry itself. Now Ryan Atkins is in second place. He made that nice pass in the log carry as well. Looking good and Batris is giving chase, but for Batris, can he hold on? Because we've seen this happen to him on this course before to fall off that lead. But can he put it all together again like he did in Asheville and hold tight to those leaders? Ryan Kempson in fourth, looking very good. Hasn't gotten the best training, he said, over the last couple months, but so talented, always able to be in the mix. These rolling sections right here, they do take the legs a little bit. You're, you're able to go fast, but all these little kicker hills, they do take a toll on the body. And you can see that Batris is starting to pull Broadbent back and Atkins has moved into the lead. A very competitive back and forth race so far. So you've got a three-man lead group and a chase group made up of Ryan Kempson, uh, not on screen, Mark Gaudet, Tyler Veerman, and a couple other guys that are going to try and make that push to reconnect with this lead group.
And this is the pipe layer, and right after the pipe layer is Twister. So this is one of those rhythm breaking obstacles. It's not designed to be a failable obstacle. I guess it could be. But really, it's about break and running rhythm. They actually catch their breath here, but coming out of it, it's about getting right back up to speed. That's Kempson through. Fifth place right now, that's Tyler Veerman. And this is the twister. Now, it's very wet and slick. You can see that Atkins, very confident in his grip, is skipping rungs while Batris is hitting every single one of them. And Atkins made up a few seconds right there. The backwards technique out of Kempson, very smooth. And then in fifth, Tyler Veerman followed closely by Mark Gaudet, and then in seventh, Ryan Woods. And we know that Woods is going to be a threat in the second half of this race. Lots of continued shuffling throughout this course amongst the leaders. All top seven are through safely out of Twister. And we're over all the way back close to the start line at Beater. Now again, the dew plays a major factor here. They have to be a little bit cautious, but use your momentum. Don't let it stop on this obstacle. That is one of the keys. Logan is making it look easy. He's had quite the season this year. When you talk about really a breakout star in the sport, Logan Broadbent is up there with everybody in terms of turning himself into one of the upper echelon racers of this sport. Now, after this descent, there is a big climb. This is nasty, it's wet, it's muddy, and it's longer than it looks. I start seeing them. As Veerman sitting there in fifth position, followed by Mark Cadet in the black, and Ryan Woods just crossing the creek. Tyler Veerman here, starting to eat up a little bit of that ground on the uphill, so good on the climbs. Runs between 50 and 60 miles a week in, in the mountains, just climbing and descending. Very, very good at it. Woods also a great climber. Was on Team USA mountain running for a little while. Lives in Boone, North Carolina, amongst the mountains. A big advantage over guys like Gadet up there who lives in Alexandria, Virginia for the last few years and has to make do with what little hills he can find but he'll have a huge advantage soon because he is moving to Colorado Springs. So look for him to emerge in the coming year as a major threat on the mountain courses. And this is where things get a little tricky. The Z wall, Batris is through clean, Broadbent as well. And a big dive from Kempson, keeping himself in this race. All right, guys, the bridge of the abyss. 
Ryan Atkins, Mark Bastress, uh, Logan Broadbent. It's sure. still very close in this race. They're all within 30 seconds to a minute um, apart. It's gonna be very interesting to see. It's really, really hot and humid out here, guys. I am sweating, soaking wet, so it's gonna be an issue, I think, a little bit later on in the course when the course gets a bit tougher, obstacles get a bit harder. And then we got Mr. Ryan Atkins taking control of the race. Mark Bashus is still right there. We'll not rule him out just yet. You can see the camaraderie of these athletes. Brian, the whiskey came by, and Ryan Atkins wanted to make sure he gave him a little love. Yeah. Mark Bajos coming in. Good job, gentlemen. So, pretty neck and neck. Great work. Now, these sandbags that they just picked up are normally about 60 pounds. Problem is that they are waterlogged, soaked, super heavy, and they've got a nice little downhill and then a flat section towards the bottom of this carry, and then a big uphill. Awesome. Here they go. Grab a black bag, guys. Let's go. Keep it going. All right, we got Mike Cadet, Ryan Woodsy, still within reach. Fantastic. Yeah. Strong man, Woodsy. Great, job, guys. Great work, Woods. Let's get it, Mark. Ryan Atkins and Mark Battress, the first two out of the sandbag carry. So Atkins and Mark Battress coming out the woods first. Campson in third. Now it's going to be a bit quick and then it starts getting nice and tricky from about mile six. We're going to see who all the standings are just now. Fourth place, um, Tyler, Logan Broadbent, fifth. Get it. Six is Mark Cadet, and seven is Mr. Woodsy himself. Nice job, nice job. So we saw Broadbent enter the woods in third and leave in fifth. That was a tough, tough break for him. He was straight on the log carry, but these heavy carries do take a toll, and they all hit a little bit different. That uphill made things a bit tougher. Woodsy looks a little knackered, but he's got a lot left in him. I know that for sure. A little bit of tough climbing up here, and you can see the versatility of Ryan Atkins, both good as a runner and as a power hiker. And switching those techniques back and forth enables him to just remain efficient, save some energy, save his calves a little bit. When you're running every step of it, like Batras is, you're really taxing the calves a lot. And with this heat and humidity that they're facing today, these athletes really need to avoid cramping. All this trail work, all those stabilizer muscles are firing on overdrive on this course, and that can lead to that cramp city that we just need to avoid. But Atkins is starting to stretch away a little bit. All these guys look like here, man. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Atkins having a little fun. Said all those guys look like spearmen. Thank <laughs> you. 
So we've got a battle here guys, we've got Ryan Atkins and we've got Mark Batches right here coming into armour, approaching mile six. Ryan Atkins making short work of that, but Mark's still in there. We've got a tricky section coming up, and then we've got a battle for third place coming in here. All right, boys, we're at Armour. We're taking a black ball to the opposite flag and bringing it right back where you found it to the next part and find it there as well. Ah, oh, Wizzy's uh, coming back in this race. Kempson. So that was Tyler Veerman with Kempson competing for third position, but right behind him is Ryan Woods, who's moved up into fifth and is closing hard. And now we get to the technical slop of this trail a little bit. You're gonna have some of this picking through the rocks and the roots and this riverbed. Stuff that Ryan Atkins is just excellent at. Things that Mark Battress, being more of a, a, from a road marathon background, it's not as natural to him. He's had to learn those skills over the years. Atkins has just been living in this for quite a while. And there's a pass from Woods. He's now moved up into fourth place, chasing Veerman now for third. The deck just keeps on shuffling up there at the front of the pack. We got Mr. Ryan Atkins in first place solidifying his lead through this kind of jungle mucky section pretty awesome and then we've got Mark Bacchus in second place there's quite a difference between second and third place right now we'll see who's coming out we have Ryan Woodsy in third place making his move biding his time Tyler fourth Kempson fifth So one thing that's important to notice is Atkins is cranking through those technical sections. Batris has to work really hard on the flats to catch up, so he's expending a ton of extra energy on the sections where they can open up, and Atkins is able to use those areas to recover a little bit more because he's so strong in the technical running and so strong on the heavy carries. And then just keep throwing heavy carries. This is another sandbag. At some point, is this toll going to just be too much for batters? Is he just going to have to pay the price a little bit too high on these runs? Or can maybe he can sustain it? Right now, Atkins looks very comfortable, very smooth. We've got uh, about a 20-second gap between first and third. Woodsy has just made his way up into third place. Here he is, followed very closely by the beast that is Tyler. Here we go. Caps is still holding on. So a pretty monster sandbag carry, some pretty, pretty steep hills in here, but uh, we see Ryan Atkins coming down right now. Okay. 
Again, more technical terrain. All right, here we go. This has definitely made a difference. Ryan Atkins absolutely crushed that. Now you've got Woodsy making himself into second place. My back is third. Ah, it's all right, four. Right here we go. That technical terrain really showing who is skilled in this type of running. Because Beerman just made a pass on Batris as well. And Woods is now sitting in second position. Woods has just methodically worked his way up through this race from seventh when we first started seeing him all the way to second. But Ryan Atkins is in a league of his own when it comes to this technical trail running and off trailing. Lots of clambering over. I think I've still got one down my shirt. Look at that pass out of Tyler Veerman. Woo, it's daylight. Now in second place, Tyler Veerman followed by Woods, and they're gonna push each other to try and gap this field. And this is steep and nasty stuff right here. Ryan Woods just climbing, grinding, back out in front of Veerman again. The competition between them is going to be fierce for the rest of this race. Both such good climbers, both such good flat ground runners. Ryan Atkins right here is looking to bury this field. He wants to separate, so he has his foot on the gas right now through these rolling hills. All right, running with Ryan Atkins just here. He has definitely solidified his lead. We're coming up to a really steep hill. Here we go. Male. So Ryan's starting the hill, it's definitely not really runnable, it's a very hikeable hill. Let's see what kind of gap he's got. He reckons about a 120 gap. We'll see, he definitely made that move on the sandbag. Woodsy's picking up pace for sure. And we'll see who's in third. There's a ton of bees. I know, I got Woods. stung, I got stung okay. big time. I'm aware, thank you. <laughs> okay, not Wait, sure what's happened to Mark Buttress, but uh, Tyler Vimmon has got himself into third place with a fantastic shot of the podium. There's one, two, and three up there on the hill. Mark Buttress still hanging in there. He went off very fast at the start. Can he have a strong second period? All right, that's your top four up there, guys. Fifth and sixth. 
Don't roll Logan out just yet. Kemp's is having a great race. We've got Mark Gadet as well, who we know can have a strong finish. I think it's going to be key for this race. It's where the heat's going to really kick in. They're going to go off into the sun just now and drop all the way through a really technical terrain in the woods. And we're going to pick them up at Irish Tables. Swim. All right, we've got Ryan Atkins coming down to Irish Tables just here. Swim, swim hard. Brian Atkins has just passed me. I'm at mile nine. We've got Iris tables in the swim just down there, which I think Ryan's pretty happy about. Uh, he has definitely solidified his lead. We're gonna see what the gap is like uh, right now. Um, he may have really destroyed that uphill. Uh, definitely, definitely uh, extending his lead. Here's Woodsy having a great second half of the race. Um, coming all the way down to Irish tables. And we'll see what sort of swimmer he's going to be. By the looks, which he's got a little gap on Tyler Fearman as well. Woods is starting to solidify that second place position. You saw him take a little nutrition right there before. That's key as he makes this final push through the last four or so miles of this course. And they are approaching the swim because the swim is going to be here in mile nine. And here it comes. Ryan Atkins is here in first place as he enters the swim. We're about nine, nine and a half miles into this course. He's got to zip up this life jacket before he can enter the water. So everyone's got the same disadvantage there. It's not like he's wasting any extra time, but a full zip and then he's good to go. This is a pretty solid lead for Atkins right now. He's looking at about well, at least 30 seconds so far and we don't see anyone else yet. So Atkins is in a very solid position. About a minute behind Atkins is Ryan Woods. He won on this course in 2019, and he broke away and crushed the field. Now he's got his work cut out for him because Atkins is a tough guy to run down. But if anybody can do it on this course, it's Ryan Woods. And in third place right now, it looks like Tyler Veerman has worked his way all the way up into a podium spot. You see Atkins right there, very smooth as a swimmer. The life jacket's gonna help keep you smooth and flat to the water. And all you gotta do is work those arms and work your legs a little bit. Ryan Woods behind him, doing more of a doggy paddle, I would say. And then Tyler Veerman looking very good, but it's a 200 or so meter swim as Logan Broadbent now has arrived in fourth place. And Mark Battress still hanging on in fifth, just seconds behind him as well. We have a tight knit battle with a swim. The whole race could shake it up. Mark Gadet is arriving as well. Mark is in sixth place. In seventh place, Ryan Kempson arriving at the swim. Logan! Logan. Logan. <laughs> right now you have Logan Broadbent off course. He's turned and swum the wrong direction for about 30 seconds and now he's got to reroute 
and get back around that yellow buoy. And that's sportsmanship out of Mark Battress because he's the one right behind him who was chasing. Mark Battress is the one who actually saved Logan Broadbent from completely veering off course. So, you know, competitors, but also friends out there. A recap on your top positions right now. Ryan Atkins sits in first place. Ryan Woods is still in second, but it's only seconds up on Tyler Veerman, who's in third. Fourth place, you had a pass. It's now Mark Battress because Logan Broadbent swam off course. He's in fifth. And then in sixth position, Mark Gaudet. Ryan Atkins. Atkins is already exiting the swim, and that gap that he has put on is significant. He's now looking to be about 30 or 40 seconds up on the next racer, if not more so. But the most important thing about it is it doesn't look like he's wasted any energy. He's stayed within himself throughout this swim. He's going to be ready to fly. Tyler Veerman, who's moved all the way up into second position. Ryan Woods sitting in third, still right there with Veerman, but he's lost a lot of time on this swim. Woo! That was refreshing. There's your second place runner right now, Tyler Veerman, looking very comfortable. And Ryan Woods not far behind him with a little bit of work to do. But now it's time to run fast. Atkins has had a pretty long hike here. And maybe he's having a little bit of trouble with cramping, some adducts or stuff. That tends to happen after a swim. But he's finally back and moving. Oh, my arms are jello. <laughs> not a swimmer. I'm not a fish. Now these runners have to go find their rhythm again. Some of them feel a little bit like a drowned rat right now after coming out of such a long swim, but Get back up to speed. Because the hoist is coming up next. And this one is super heavy today. The bags are very waterlogged. And you're going to see it kind of pull these guys right off the ground. Look at Atkinson planting both feet on that gate. Job, all way, all way. Having to really leverage that weight back. It could literally lift him off the ground. But that's a very good, quick, strong pull out of Atkins. He's not going to fail an obstacle like this. But certainly, someone might. And now he's got some big climbing ahead of him. This is one of the biggest climbs in the course coming up. Little shoe tie. So this climb has a couple sections in it. There's a steep start, it flattens out, kicks up again, flattens out a second time, and then one big kicker at the finish. Three segments of climbing on one hill. Well, here we are, Hercules. The swim made a major dent. Tyler Veerman has moved back into second. Having a great race. Him and Ryan Woodsy have got extremely wet bags. Ryan Atkins has already gone. Woodsy's trying to find the right one. Veerman's gonna get there. Oh, you got it, that's it. No. Keep going. You've got one the knot there to grab. All right, now ah, down easy. Down easy, down, down, easy, down. Nice. down easy. You did a great job, no reason to shut. You did great. Good. Oh my God, that was the heaviest fucking bag. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. Super heavy bags today. Woodsy is going to get it. He's going to avoid those burpees. He's got to really push. And coming up into fourth place, see the standard of swim, which has messed everything up. It's amazing. Mike Cadet, 
fourth place. Woodsy oh, saves his burpees. Hurt, it's called rain. <laughs> and up he goes up the hill. Atkins continues to climb in that lead, but you saw that Mark Cadet moved from sixth to fourth on that swim. This is a great showing. Mark Batches. So we're all vying for third place right here. Mark's halfway out with his bag. Logan still trying to figure out what one is best. And Mark Batches is uh, using his strength. First of the marks, get it. The swim has zapped people's arms, the bags are heavy, and it's just causing all sorts of problems here today. Logan's uh, chosen for burpees. Mark and Kempson are in. And this is the first time in a long time that we've seen so much carnage over at the Herkoist. Multiple guys doing burpees. Guys taking forever to get this obstacle done, but Kempson pulled it off, stretched the back. Good job, Ryan. Good job. So Logan's finished his burpees. Ryan got it. Well done. And Mark's doing his burpees. Oh boy, it's going to be absolute chaos in the last three miles of this race. Atkins has managed to crest the last big climb of this course, but there's a lot left in front of him, including after this big descent, a bucket carry, amongst other things, a, a rope traverse, and then the deadly tire. That tire flip that can totally blow this race open again. We've seen it happen in 2018 at this venue and in 2019. This is a massive descent, steep at first, and then he'll hit road and continue to descend over an inverted wall and then the bucket. And just look at those breathtaking views from Summit Bechtel Reserve. It is gorgeous at the fo now that the fog has lifted. And this is a fun surprise right here. Check out this bucket, carry. what this looks like. As Atkins is off and running. Does that look like a familiar little sign right there? A Spartan helmet. And that means multiple climbs, multiple descents on this carry. As Veerman has just continued to fight with Ryan Woods, the two of them just duking it out. Oh wow, we have a fantastic battle for second and third right here. We've got Woodsy, and we've got Tyler Beerman. We're approaching the, uh, approaching the bucket carry that Ryan Atkins was already on. Good job, Beerman. Good job, Beerman, hell yeah. As you can see, Atkins is over there, first place. Woodsy, Beerman, fighting for that second spot. Unbelievable.
Atkins just finished their wonderful Spartan head. In a good first place. Old man Woodsy starting to do a little bit of damage here on that carry. He's surprisingly strong on this every time we get to it. And as he dumps this bucket, he'll be happy to hear that he has uh, laid the woods on the bucket carry and he's extended a nice little gap over Tyler Veerman. And I'm standing here in the middle of quite a gauntlet of obstacles because to my right you can see the bucket carry, which we have Mark Adet still on right now, followed by Logan Broadbent sitting in fifth place. Just taking off out of it, Tyler Veerman and Ryan Woods vying for that second place podium spot. Now they're going to have a nice running segment, then they'll eventually hit the traverse, the rope traverse over there, come back and hit the rope climb, then knock out Helix before heading into the really nasty part, which is that tire flip off in the distance. So we are in the middle of it all, and the battle is raging. Now this is the rope traverse, known as the Tyrolean traverse. Athletes can go above or below on this. Ryan Atkins, quite a bit ahead. On the Tyro traverse, and then uh, can't wait for this battle to unfold. See him through the woods. Who's got a stronger, Woodsy or Veerman? We'll see. They're gonna be coming down this hill any minute moment. Uh, we've got Ryan Atkins on this uh, beautiful section here, coming back into rope climb. Uh, quite an exciting finish to come. First out of the woods is Woodsy himself. Um, it's gonna be a really, really uh, fast finish, but there's a lot of obstacles uh, to come, but he is really, Put a bit of a gap. It's those last couple pulls that are the toughest. But Ryan Woods makes quick work of it. <laughs> and Behrman is right there. Atkins is now at the rope climb. He'll then head into Helix. And then the tire flip, the one thing that could shake this race up. Just making Helix look easy. No, Woods cannot take his foot off the gas right now as he finishes that rope climb because Veerman is not far behind, lurking, and this tire has cost Woods at this venue before. You're killing it, you're killing it. All right, we've got Ryan Woodsy in second place. Ryan Atkins is already on the tire flip. He's put a bit of a gap on Veerman, who is in third place on the rope climb. That is a solid flip. 
out of Ryan Atkins. Very little stands between him and the win now. The spear will be the big thing. If he can nail that spear, he's going to be in a really good spot. It'll be hard for anybody to catch up to him, but the spear always lurks, and the spear is always dangerous. But can Woodsy pull off this flip? Notice the pinch grip. Now he's able to get under it and walk that thing forward. He and Atkins both working that thing to the side, picking their spot so the tire doesn't land in a spot it had been flipped to before. But can he get number two? The second flip is always harder. The tire sinks into the ground if it's wet earth like it is today. And now you gotta be able to get your fingers deep under the tire, not just the tips of your fingers, but you need a really deep grip because of how slick and wet the tire is. All right, exciting things going on in uh, second and third place. Woodsy still struggling to get the uh, second flip of the tire. And here comes Tyler Beerman. So, Woodsy's worst nightmare. Come on, Woods, can you do it? He's got under it. He's got to walk through it. Right. Got it. As Veerman gets his first flip, there you go. it looks like Woods has pulled it off. Nice. Ryan Woods is using everything he's got. Fuck yeah, Ryan. Come on. So we've got second, third, and fourth place here as Mark Gadet comes into play. Ryan Woods is going through the rolling mud. We're in that same thing, the second flip being so hard for Veerman, who opts to just take the burpees. Veerman opts for burpees. And now Mark Gadet with an opportunity to make a pass and move into third place. Can he do it? Gadet has a chance. Checking now his third tire. If he can just dry his hands and make this work for him. But the grip, it's so slippy. Now on a fourth tire. Such a significant moment and opportunity for him. He's got under this one. Veerman methodically doing those burpees in the back, but not fast. And Mark has finally opted for the burpees. Mark also chooses uh, for burpees. So this is going to be a little burpee ba battle. We've got Logan, Logan Broadbank coming in here as well. And uh, I'm going to go catch up with Woodsy, who's just about to go through the dunk wall. Uh, but you've got a second, third and fourth, and fifth Logan Broadbank coming in here. Now watch out for Logan Broadbent because as we saw in Jacksonville, he does burpees faster than anyone. So if he does not opt for the tire flip and goes for the burpees, great opportunity for him. Atkins now at the spear with a miss. And this has opened the door for Ryan Woods to potentially pull him back in. But Ryan's gonna have to crank these out and he's flying on these first few. Gross. Woods has got to put this charge on now, but the thing is he does not know that Atkins is doing burpees right now as he approaches the spear throw himself. That was a great pace out of Ryan Atkins, and he still holds that lead now with just a vertical cargo net and the multi-rig. Now the multi-rig is sketchy here today. It's not a gimme. Woods needs this throw. He'll lock up that second place if he can do it. Sticks it right down the middle. And now Ryan Atkins is closing in on that victory. He came here today with the goal of winning this race, with the goal of putting himself in position to win this series. 
He'll be in a virtual tie for, with VJ Jones if he can get through this last obstacle, putting himself in position to win the series outright in Big Bear. Will Ryan Atkins miss the spear, did his 30 burpees, and he's still in first place coming over the slip wall, and now with just one obstacle remaining, that final obstacle being this multi-rig, ring to pipe to rope. It is a tough transition. He does need to be careful on this, but if he can pull this off, he's leaving here with first place, 300 points, and all of a sudden, he is tied with VJ Jones for first place in the series. Look at all these fans here just to see this man claiming victory. 300 points that come along with first place today in the West Virginia Beast. The fourth race in the Spartan U.S. National Series belongs to Ryan Atkins, your champion on the day. And now he has tied VJ Jones, who must be a very nervous man watching from home. Second place today if he can complete this obstacle after a win last time he raced here in 2019. Easily his best race of the entire year. We knew his training's been ramping up. We knew how strong he has been so far on this course. And of course today, a very happy Ryan Woods, second place. A massive, massive performance from him and it moves him significantly up the leaderboard in the National Series. Those second place points are huge. Tyler Veerman somehow back in third place and he nails that spear. And Veerman has just claimed that third place if he can get through this last obstacle. And with one obstacle between him and the finish line, Tyler Veerman is in third position. His first race of the year he ran in Utah, he took fifth place and now another opportunity to score some major points in this series. A guy that's gonna climb those leaderboards with one race remaining. Tyler Veerman is just a couple swings away from that podium. And there you have it. Third place from Tyler Veerman. He flew all the way out here last night just for this race and could not be more excited for himself. Top three. One last battle in this race today. Logan Broadbent just seconds ahead of Mark Gadet for that fourth place spot. Broadbent seems to have reeled him in right near the end of this race. And as a ninja warrior, it's unlikely he's gonna make any mistakes on an obstacle like this. So efficient Broadbent is. And Mark right behind him. This is that big moment for Broadbent. And he makes it count, ringing the bell, taking fourth place. Logan Broadbent having quite the season this year, also taking third place in Jacksonville. Mark Gadet with a top five finish here. A strong day for the Army Ranger as he crosses the line, his last race before he moves across the country. Thank you all for joining us today for an incredible race from these phenomenal athletes. For Spartan, I'm David Megida. We will see you all in Lake Tahoe.